Good evening, Jacqueline and Daniela. Thank you for coming. It's nice to see you again. Thank okay. you. Nice to see you. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Hey, today, girls. How's your day going? Okay, hold on for just a second. A little hard. I'm finished another class, so please give me some minutes. I back. All right, guys, uh, thank you for holding. I'm, I'm so sorry about that. I had some technical difficulties here on my end. So thank you for holding, guys. Uh, it's nice to see you again. I, I heard that somebody told me that uh, you were still at another class, maybe. So. Yes, I'm Daniel. Thank you. Oh, Daniela. Okay, I see. Well, that's fine. Thank you. Thank you, Daniela. Well, uh, thank you so much for coming, guys. I'm really happy to see you again. So. We're gonna have our class again uh, for today. Yesterday we talked about, we have like an introduction to the module and we started uh, the new topic. Like the, the topic was about relative pronouns. So we were going to continue with that, but we are just, just gonna just finish that. Just maybe just review the information really quick. And then we are going to move forward to the next topic because we need to complete section number one and section number two. So we need to uh, do all of that by the end of the week, right? Creo que por ahí alguien estuvo compartiendo en el grupo de WhatsApp. Quiero ver, por acá está. Dice secciones 1 y 2 completas, ¿verdad? Como les estaba mencionando anteriormente, tenemos que completar eso para el final de la semana. Dice el día sábado se estará realizando la primera actualización de notas. ¿Ok? Así que tenemos que terminarlo para el fin de esta semana. All right, guys. So, well, uh, thank you so much for coming, guys. Uh, Jacqueline, welcome. Good evening. How are you? Fine, thanks. Very good. Kind of nice. cold. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> I know, right? It's really cold today, but I like it. Do, do you like it or not? Yeah, I like it, but the, the rainy days are kind of bored. You cannot go out and to do a things outside, I don't know, activities outside. Yeah, that, I know that, yes. So you're the kind of people that don't like too much rainy days because you like to go outside and do things and that, you don't like it, right? No. I see, okay. That's fine, very good. Yeah, I think that probably it's going to rain maybe for maybe two days. I guess, for three days, I don't know. I think that the weather forecast, they said that it was going to rain for like three days because it seems like uh, there is something going on that is not going to allow the storm uh, to get into the country. So it's going to go back mm -hmm. to the Pacific Ocean, I think. Yeah. Right? So, very good. Bueno, muchas gracias, Jacqueline. Eh, mucho gusto verla acá otra vez. <clears throat> Así que disfrutemos del clima frío también, guys. Eh, eh, creo que todo este año ha sido muy caliente, ¿verdad? Yo, la verdad, que a mí no me gusta cuando hace calor. Pero pues este año ha sido, creo que, de los más calientes que me puedo acordar. Todos los días he estado esperando desde hace meses que haga frío, que sea esta, esta temporada del año. Porque la verdad que es, es desesperante a veces. ¿Puedo decir el año más caliente? No. ¿El año más caliente? like if you want yeah. to say about uh, like uh, yeah the hottest year yeah well in my okay. case I prefer this weather because yeah, most of the time we have to deal with 
uh, uh, hit. I don't know if, if I can say hit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's very boring. Mm-hmm. I prefer this kind of weather, but I think that it's too much rain. That's rain. true. So I prefer wind. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Walter, yeah, so I think that I agree with you. So maybe it's the hottest year that I can remember. Just like you said, uh, we have to deal with hot temperatures uh, almost all year. So yes. I, I think that, you know, it's really good when we have like a cool weather, when it is not that hot, I, like I usually it is. So I agree with yeah, you. Yeah, you can feel the 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 bonus Christmas coming, <laughs> and that is another good feeling for this season. That's <laughs> right. Yes, <laughs> do you guys mm-hmm. like Christmas? Because I, I I like Christmas. I mean, this is like probably the best part of the year. Uh, Christmas, just yeah. like Walter said, you can feel like the spirit in the air. You can feel yeah. probably there are you know that. Uh, songs that people listen during this uh, time of the year, like Mariah Carey and that kind of things. <laughs> I already have the Christmas tree in my house. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> That's crazy. Good. I know what. I like it. For real. Yeah, yeah I mean, I'm, I'm thinking about putting a Christmas tree here too. Uh, because it, you looks, have to. it, looks, it looks good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you, you have to know that your bill will, will increase. That is true. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Most of the times, that's true. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> bueno, gracias, Walter. Thank you so much. Sí, eh, yes. Walter tiene mucho espíritu navideño, si se dan cuenta. Ya puso el árbol, dice él. Y apenas estábamos en octubre. Yes. <laughs> ya, yes. ya pare, pare. I, um, mm-hmm. Go ahead. <laughs> like a supermarket. Right, that's exactly what I wanted to say. Yeah, I was about to say that. That you are just like uh, like the supermarkets or that kind of uh, stores that you go to that they already have like the Christmas uh, stuff. They decorate uh, on September, almost right. at the end of September. That's right, yes. yes. They do it earlier uh, every year. Yes. <laughs> that's true, exactly. Walter es así, ¿verdad? Como si fuera el Dollar City prácticamente, que... Ya como en septiembre ya sacan todos los, los adornos de Navidad. No sé si se han fijado. If you, if you think about it, we are almost around, we are missing around uh, two or three payments uh, in order to get the Christmas bonus. So for me, this is uh, um, almost nothing. Matter, it's a matter of time that is, is a little that short. How can I say that? Uh, I don't know. I want to say short. I don't know. You mean well, like... I want to say... Yeah, I try to say that I don't feel this time. This month. I don't feel it because this is only passed really fast. Oh, yes, yes. I know what you mean. Time goes really fast. Yes. Yes. And yeah, I think that we are all maybe looking forward to that. Uh, and I, I share the same feeling that you have. I hope that it is already December so I can get my bonus. Because uh, I mean, I, I think that we all want money. We all want to buy things for our uh, partner, for our family, friends, that kind of things. So that's really exciting. I'm, I'm looking forward to that too. And hopefully, that uh, I mean, <laughs> time goes fast, so that can happen. Bueno, <clears throat> muchas gracias por estar aquí, guys. Eh, ayer estábamos hablando acerca de los pronombres relativos, ¿verdad? Dijimos que teníamos los pronombres relativos para eh, que funcionaban como un sujeto y también como objetos, ¿correcto? Ustedes eh, creo que lograron, bueno, identificar bien eh, cada uno de ellos. Entonces ahora tal vez vamos a practicar un poquitito de eso y después vamos a pasar con el siguiente tema. Así que les voy a mostrar por acá lo que estábamos viendo ayer. Give me just a second, guys. Bueno, vamos a compartir el audio también por acá porque si no después... We have issues. Don't want that. Hello. 
this is what we learned yesterday, right? We have the relative pronouns subjects, and then we have the relative pronouns as objects. So we said that when a relative pronoun uh, works as a subject, that means that it is like part of the subject. Like in this case, it says, I like guys who aren't too serious. So basically uh, this is referring to uh, guys, the, the kind of guys that I like, okay? But in this case, when we, when we have a relative pronoun that has its function that functions as a pronoun, as an, as an object, sorry, as an object, we have uh, something different here. And it says, I prefer someone who I can talk to easily. Okay, so basically the action in this case uh, is the one that uh, really matters. The, the, the action is what affects the subject in this case. Okay, eh, básicamente dijimos, eh, solamente para recapitular, Rápidamente, que acá esto funcionaba, este who y that funcionaba como parte del sujeto, por así decirlo. Y por acá, en esta otra parte, eh, se trataba de un objeto, esta palabra. ¿Por qué decíamos que era un objeto? Porque la acción recaía sobre el sujeto del cual estábamos hablando. Como en este caso, eh, estamos diciendo, yo prefiero a alguien con quien yo puedo hablar fácilmente. ¿Okay? O preferiría a alguien con quien pueda divertirme. Entonces, la acción recae sobre el sujeto. ¿Ok? Eh, vamos a ver. Entonces, me gustaría preguntarle a ustedes, guys. Eh, ¿Me podrían dar ustedes ejemplos acerca de esto? Vamos a ver. ¿Qué clase de personas le gustan a ustedes? Uh, ¿Le gustan a ustedes? Podemos, como dice acá en el, en el ejemplo, podemos utilizar diferentes tipos de, de nombres, por así decirlo, acá. Por ejemplo, aquí dice, I like guys. You can say, I like people. I like girls. Uh, I like uh, boys. Uh, it depends, right? You can say whatever you want to, and uh, you can change that part. And then you can say, um, for example, I like people that don't uh, talk too much because I um, I like to be quiet and I enjoy uh, silence, and that kind of things. So I want you to tell me uh, an example, and I want you to tell me why, the reason why. I like people who is able to get along with everybody. Mm -hmm. is, that a, is that correct? Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, very good. Yeah, the only thing is that you need to change because you're talking about people. So you need to say people that are. Are. Right. I was thinking about it, but mm -hmm. you are right. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And the reason is because... It is easier to have a conversation with someone that is able to uh, get along with people. Very good. That's Very good. Thank, you. Thank you so much, Walter. I appreciate that. Vamos a ver, alguien más por acá. Karen, sí. vamos a ver. Y luego, eh, Jared. Eh, también tengo a Dinora. Muy bien. Yes, teacher. Eh, vamos a ver. Entonces, empecemos con Dinora eh, y luego eh, Jared. Okay, my example is I like guys that are funny. Is correct? Yep. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, okay. you can say you can say that. So that, I like guys that are funny, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Because it's more uh, happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that you can say I understand what you're trying to say, but you may be you may want to say something like I like guys that are funny because it is funnier, I guess. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, muy bien. Muchas gracias, eh, Dinora. Solamente le cambiamos okay. esa parte porque yo, yo le entiendo lo que quiere decir. Eh, usted quiere decir que le gustan, digamos, los muchachos que son divertidos, graciosos, yes. por así decirlo, porque es más eh, divertido. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we can say something like that. But other than that, perfect. Thank you so much, Dinora. Vamos uh -huh. a ver, luego teníamos a Jared por acá que quería participar, vamos a ver. Good evening. Okay. I like people who have a sense of humor and who could talk about interesting topics. So you like people that have a good sense of humor. And, I'm sorry, I, can you say it again? And who can talk about interesting topics. Interesting topics, okay, very good. Thank you. 
right, vamos a ver, tenemos por ahí a Melissa, creo, y también a Jonathan. I like guys that are friendly, and I don't like guys that are rude. Okay, very good, very good, Melissa. So you like guys that are friendly. Uh, do you consider yourself like an easygoing person, Melissa? Do you think that you like to get along with other people and things like that? Uh, kind of. Okay. How many friends do you have? Uh, let's say like, like how many close friends do you have? Um, I have like five friends. Okay. Okay, very good. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you, Melissa. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, I think that when we have to, when we become adults, like we have to go to work and we have a lot of responsibilities in our life, we probably don't have as many friends as when we were younger, right? That's at least something that happened to me. I mean, I remember that when I was younger, uh, when I was like in high school, I had uh, more friends. But now I just have like maybe one or two friends. I don't know. I don't talk to too many people because I am like busy all the time. So that's something that happens, right? Vamos a ver. Eh, ¿Quién más estaba por acá que quería participar? No me acuerdo. Vamos a ver. Jonathan, es cierto. Jonathan, perdón, se me olvidó. Good teacher. Good evening. Well... For me, I like girls with a strong character. They are who are very pretty when you meet them. Sometimes it's just appearance. I think so. Very good. Very good, Jonathan. And don't you think that that can be a little challenging maybe? Because, I mean, if you have a girl that has a strong personality, then that may be uh, challenging sometimes because, yeah. uh, you know, if she gets uh, like, sad or something like that then it may be difficult uh, to deal with it's a fight for me <laughs> yeah so you, you see it like like something that you enjoy it's like you like yeah. that that game <laughs> very good very good i like it <laughs> thank you jonathan bueno eso eso pasa también <laughs> creo que <clears throat> estoy un poco de acuerdo con jonathan también <laughs> Bueno, vamos a ver. Eh, de hecho, <ríe> bueno, bueno, vamos a continuar. Vamos a ver quién más tenemos por acá. Creo que antes le pregunté a Karen. Vamos a ver si Karen nos puede compartir algo. Karen Rodríguez. Hello, yes. Um, well, I would say that I prefer bosses that aren't too serious and I can easily speak and I can easily uh, talk about. Um, life and business things that I can easily approach them. So. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yes, I, I agree with you on that. Uh, because I think everyone wants a boss like that, right? Yeah, I think that everybody does. Yes, I agree with you on that. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, I've been at different places and it's really awful when you have somebody that, like a boss that you feel like you are afraid uh, of them, that you cannot mm -hmm like talk to them about uh, different things. So I, I agree with you on that. Yeah. My current boss is in the uh, United States. Uh, she is American and mm -hmm. um, it's totally different to have a boss um, not Salvadorian. They are more flexible. They are more open. And uh, yeah, I think they are more relaxed. I think that, that yeah, Boston from El Salvador. I think that I agree with you. Yes, I think I agree with you because I probably they they may be like more straight forward, mm -hmm. like they get to the point uh, because that's something that happens when uh, people from uh, Latin America that we maybe like we are not like straight to the point and things like that. But people from the U.S. may be sometimes like flexible, just like you said. So like if you have a problem or something, they may be like more flexible to help you or to find a solution. So I think that's very good. Very good yeah, thing. I think they, they care more about your 
and uh, your family, even um, for your pets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very so nice. It's, it's a little yeah. bit different, but it's, it's better. Definitely. Very good. Very good, mm -hmm. Karen. Thank you so much mm -hmm. for sharing that uh, experience with us. Thank you. Very good. Muchas gracias a Karen. Eh, muy bonito, la verdad, escuchar diferentes perspectivas de ustedes, ¿verdad? Vamos a ver, no sé si alguien más quiere participar, guys. Me gusta escucharlos y, pues, que podamos desarrollar más nuestras habilidades, ¿verdad? O sea, ¿por qué tenemos a Daniela? Ok, Daniela, ¿cómo es? Thank you. Well, I like people who love animals. For me, it's important because I think they show their humanity and that's important to me. Very good, yes. Uh, very good, Daniela. So you like people that love animals. Yes. Very good. Do you have pets? Do you have maybe a dog or cat? Yeah, I have three dogs and two cats. Okay, very good. And yeah. Very good. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Daniela. I appreciate that. I think Thank that you. nowadays it's like more common that people have pets and they have become more important that years ago. So I, I have pets too. I have like, I think five dogs, I guess. I used to have one cat, but the problem with cats is that they, I, I don't know how to explain this, but they just, they get lost. Sometimes, I don't know why, they just go away. Uh, they go to other houses and then they never come back. So that's something that happened to me. And it's really sad because I like that. I like cats, honestly. But they can be, like, difficult to raise. <laughs> but when, when you talk about the cats, it's important to castrate the cats. That's really If they are boys. Yeah, that's important. That's the best option for, for me. That's why my cats are another dog in my house, in my home, because it, they they pass all the day in, at home. And when I open the door, they just, I don't know, are in front of my, home, my house. And when a car or somebody are in the street, they back inside the house. So that's important, castrated the cats. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Yeah, I think that uh, I think that that's something that is really uh, important, not only for cats, but maybe also for dogs sometimes. But just just like you said, probably cats are more important when it comes to that, because uh, I mean they reproduce really fast. They uh, I don't know how, but they probably they have uh, some uh, little cats, and then uh, you get more and more. So it's it's really that's another problem control. yes it's another and it's a big problem it is it is yes because uh, they, they at the end they suffer so that's really awful you know something i had two cats before that i have now and the two cats death because um i don't know what's the word sorry but they had V I H. Oh, H I V. Yeah, but in the cat, but in the cats, yeah, was completely bad for me. I I, I saw how my cats suffer uh -huh. in this moment. So it's important to treat cats. It's important for me. They had yes. to stay at home. I yes. See. So they had H I V. I didn't know that cats could get H I V. Yes, I, I discovered, I'm sorry, I show up in this moment was horrible for me, but yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. Sorry, sorry about that. Bueno, qué, eh, qué mal, de verdad, qué triste. Eh, lo siento mucho, Daniela, por eso que le sucedió. Pero sí, como dice Daniela, creo que es mejor cuando tenemos eh, mascotas ser bien responsables, ¿verdad? Creo que... En nuestro país tal vez no hay tanta cultura acerca de eso, pero nosotros podemos irlo cambiando poco a poco, eh, tratar de hacer conciencia de que la gente cuida a sus mascotas, que eh, hagan parte a veces de campañas de castración y todo eso. Creo que al final es importante para evitar que los animales sufran. La verdad que son al final eh, seres vivos que también 
sienten, que sufren, entonces es muy importante también eh, ser parte de eso, eh, poder ayudar y que las cosas cambien, y ojalá algún día pues el mundo sea un poco mejor. Así que, bueno, thank you so much, Daniel, I appreciate that. So, thank you so much, guys, for uh, your participations. I think that we can move on um, to the next part. Sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry. Hmm? I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not sure if it's just me, but sometimes I just hardly hear you. I am sorry about that. Uh, okay. Probably it is, uh, I think that there is something on my end. So I I apologize because I, I think that I have a problem with my with my headset. Uh, I don't know if that's the case, but I'm going to change my headset tomorrow so you guys can hear me better. Okay, thanks. Yeah, thank you for letting me know, Karen. I appreciate that. Thank you. I'm sorry, guys. I apologize. I don't know what is going on, but today I had problems with my internet. I don't know if it is because of the rain. I don't, I don't know that. I don't know if it is my headset. I'm not really sure. But I will change them tomorrow so you can hear me. In the meantime, I will try to speak up a little bit so you guys can hear me. Okay? We're going to try to work this out for today. Well, thank so then, guys. Well, thank you, Karen. Uh, so then we have this uh, section here. It is uh, 1.4. Knowledge check. We have uh, this... Uh, set of questions uh, i mean not questions really but we have these uh statements and then we need to match the statement that matches the i mean in this case the sentence so like for example we have i don't want to have a partner i have nothing in common with. for example so basically acá lo que tenemos que hacer yo creo que ustedes ya lo hicieron porque he visto que algunos ya van más avanzados incluso más adelante entonces, básicamente acá solamente es de seleccionar. Por ejemplo, acá dice, no quiero tener una pareja. Y luego hay una, un conjunto de opciones que podemos seleccionar. Y tenemos que ver cuál es la que coincide con esto, ¿ok? Por ejemplo, está acá, estas personas son organizadas e inteligentes. Eh, yo no tengo nada en común con esta persona. Esta persona tiene buenas cualidades de, de liderazgo. O estas personas eh, tienen un buen sentido del humor. Entonces acá, por ejemplo, dice, no quiero tener una pareja. Y la opción que tiene más, eh, que coincide con la oración, en este caso sería esta de acá, ¿verdad? So I have nothing in common with this person. Uh, so then if we want to change it, if we want to use the relative pronouns, uh, how can we do that? Uh, what would be like the new sentence? If we use a relative pronoun, to use, uh, to join these uh, two sentences. ¿Cómo sería? Digamos que queremos unir estas dos y formar una nueva oración con un pronombre relativo, como los que estábamos viendo antes. Um, I think that is, I don't want to have a partner that I have nothing in common with this person. Mm -hmm. okay, very good, Karen. So you can say just like, uh, I don't want to have a partner that I have nothing in common with. You can just leave it at that. And that's fine. Okay? Entonces, muy bien, muy bien, Karen. Eh, para, para todos, entonces, solamente lo podemos dejar así, ¿verdad? Eh, yo no quiero tener una pareja con quien no tenga nada en común. Okay? Eh, luego dice, I like to meet people. Y acá tenemos eh, otra vez las, las opciones. Y, pues, hay que, aquí tenemos que seleccionarlo, ¿ok? Vamos a ver. Like me people. Vamos a ver. Probablemente esta pudiera ser, creo. O people that have a good sense of humor. Creo que esa sería la más correcta, ¿no? I like to meet people that have a good sense of humor. Maybe. Pudiera ser eso. Y así, ustedes van a tener que elegirlas. Eh, probablemente ya lo hicieron. Así que no nos vamos a entretener mucho en esa parte. Y por acá, eh, en esta parte de abajo lo que tenemos que hacer es lo que acabamos de practicar con Karen. Básicamente, unir las dos oraciones utilizando el pronombre relativo. Puede ser tanto who como that. ¿okay? Cualquiera de los dos. Por ejemplo, está acá, dice I don't want to have a partner. I have nothing in common with this person. And then just like Karen said, I don't want to have a partner but I have nothing in common with. ¿Okay? Just like that. We just have to do it uh, for these two sentences. And that's it. Vamos a ver, entonces vamos a continuar, guys, porque tenemos que ir avanzando. Right, so, uh, 
subtraction that we have, it says 1.5. Uh, is We have the lesson objective. It says by the end of this class, participants will learn adjectives that describe personal characteristics. Okay, so we have this uh, little video here. We're going to learn how to describe people's personalities. Okay, vamos a escuchar el video rapidito y luego vamos a discutirlo. Okay, Pero vamos a practicar un poco. Así que vamos a escuchar el video por ahora, guys. Hi everyone. By the end of this class, you'll learn adjectives that describe personal characteristics. And you'll listen to an audio program in which you'll identify the adjectives that best describe each individual. So let's get started by learning the adjectives that you see before you. I'll be making this document available so you can have it for reference. Easy going. An easy going person is someone who doesn't worry much or get angry easily. Egotistical. An egotistical person is someone who has a very high opinion of himself or herself. Inflexible. An inflexible person is someone who doesn't change easily and is stubborn. Modest. A modest person is someone who doesn't brag about his or her accomplishments. Sociable. A sociable person is someone who enjoys being with other people. Stingy. A stingy person is someone who doesn't like sharing. Supportive. A supportive person is someone who is helpful and encouraging. Temperamental. A temperamental person is someone who has unpredictable or irregular moods. Unreliable. An unreliable person is someone who doesn't do what he or she promised. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to listen to an audio program at this time and as I mentioned we need to be familiar with these adjectives in order for us to uh, right guys I just want to pause the video just for a second so I can uh, just go over these adjectives with you so we have different kind of uh, we have different adjectives here so we can describe people's personalities like we have easy going Egotistical, inflexible, modest, sociable, stingy, supportive, temperamental, unreliable. So do you guys have any questions regarding this? Uh, we have that an easygoing person is someone that doesn't worry or get angry easily. Okay. Una persona tranquila, por así decirlo, que no se preocupa o se enoja con facilidad. Eh, egotistical, creo que es bastante parecido con el español. Eh, alguien... Eh, como egocéntrico, ¿no? Eh, dice que es una persona que tiene una opinión muy alta acerca de él o ella misma. Luego, inflexible, una persona que no cambia fácilmente y es, um, <coughs> déjenme pensarlo, <risa> stubborn, eh, es un esterco, básicamente. Es lo que quiere decir. Se me había ido la palabra stubborn, a veces se me olvida. Stubborn es como alguien que es muy necio, terco, que por eso dice acá inflexible, alguien que no cambia. Then we have modest. Eh, dice a modest person is someone who doesn't brag about his or her accomplishments. ¿Qué significa eso? Que alguien, uh, when we say that someone doesn't brag about his or her accomplishments, what, what do we mean by that? ¿Qué significa to brag? ¿Qué, ¿Qué es el significado de este verbo? Brag es básicamente como jactarse o alardear, por así decirlo, ¿verdad? Ustedes pueden de, de, usarlo de esa forma, ¿ok? They, uh, he bragged about his uh, accomplishments, por ejemplo. ¿Ok? People that, that like to show off, show off. Okay, so then we have uh, sociable. Mm -hmm. Walter, any questions, Walter? Uh, no, no, no question. Okay, All right. So we have sociable uh, person that someone is someone that who all, who enjoys being with other people. Okay, 
Man, stingy. Stingy person is someone who doesn't like sharing. Let me tell you a story, guys. When I was a little kid, I was a really stingy when it comes to my uh, when it when it came to my food. Like, for example, my my grandmother would come to the house, and let's say that we used to have like dinner, and she would come to the house, and sometimes uh, she wanted me to share my food with her, but I just wouldn't want to do it. I, I was really upset when she wanted to take some some of my food. Uh, so that's the way that I was when I was a kid. <laughs> bueno, cuando yo estaba pequeño, guys, yo era eh, es una pequeña historia nada más para ilustrar un poco. Eh, cuando era pequeño, no me gustaba compartir, especialmente mi comida. Era como que si alguien me quería quitar mi comida, pues yo me ponía pues, muy enojado por eso. Entonces eso es como algo, eh, un, un ejemplo de una persona que es eh, egoísta, okay? eso es lo que significa esto, stingy, someone who doesn't like sharing, then we have supportive, eh, bueno, alguien que apoya, ok, luego tenemos temperamental, es cuando alguien eh, cambia mucho de humor, por así decirlo, y por último, unreliable, una persona en quien no se puede confiar, ok, no confiable, unreliable, like for example, if you uh, have, let's say you have a friend, and you think that Uh, you cannot rely on that person uh, on something, then you can say that that's an unreliable person. Okay? Bueno, vamos a continuar. Okay, gossip people. Excuse me? It's like a gossip pe people. Gossip people? Yes, unreliable. It's like a gossip people. Uh, can you spell that? Yeah, uh, they are not able to keep a sec the secret. Oh, I see what you mean. Yep. Uh, yeah, we mm -hmm. maybe. Like an untrustful. Right, right. It's basically yeah. like somebody that yeah. you cannot trust to do something. Let's say, for example, let's say that you ask somebody to do something and then uh, that person doesn't do it, then uh, that's somebody that is unreliable. Because you cannot trust that person, okay. right? Así que vamos a ver por acá. Ahora hay un pequeño, una, una serie de eh, conversaciones eh, acerca de, creo que tres personas diferentes, en las cuales eh, se, vamos a tener que identificar eh, cuáles son los eh, adjetivos de estos que están acá que mejor se acoplan a la descripción de cada una de ellas. ¿okay? Pero vamos a escuchar. Si pueden, ustedes tomen notas. Eh, también es bueno, ¿verdad? Que puedan hacerlo. Eh, creo que es como cuando estábamos nosotros estudiando, ¿verdad? A veces, ahora, hoy en día, la gente lo que hace es tomar una fotografía. Pero si tomamos una fotografía o algo por el estilo, pues simplemente la dejamos ahí guardada. Ya nunca más la vemos. Entonces, a veces cuando tomamos notas, también nos ayuda pues, a, a reforzar un poco, en este caso, la gramática. También a que nos acordemos de las palabras y todo eso. ¿Okay? Así que si ustedes quieren y pueden tomar notas, pues es una buena idea también. Así que vamos a continuar. Vamos a escuchar el, la siguiente parte del video. Answer the questions from this audio program. What we're going to do in this audio program is we're going to listen to a description of Andrea, James, and Mr. Johnson. And then what I would like for you to do is to choose the best statement that describes each individual so let's listen to that audio program at this time so have you seen Andrea lately yeah I see her once in a while how's she doing I've been meaning to call her well to be honest she's kind of been getting on my nerves lately what do you mean she's changed a lot since we've started college she talks about herself all the time and she always manages to mention how good she is at everything she does really That would be annoying. It is. You know, she asked me to be roommates with her next semester, but I don't think I want to live with her. She used to be really generous, but now she's just the opposite. And it's not just with money, but her time as well. Well, college can be stressful. You two are good friends. Maybe you need to talk more. All right, guys. Um, almost ahead. Quiero que veamos esta parte eh, 
tenemos que identificar cuál es la que mejor se, se acopla. Y me gustaría que me digan ustedes qué escucharon en la conversación. ¿Okay? Vamos a ver qué tan buena tenemos la retención de la memoria. Eh, ¿Qué fue lo que dijeron ellos? ¿Y por qué tenemos que elegir eh, cuál opción? No sé si lo quieren escuchar otra vez o con una vez más. I think it's fine. Another time, please. For me, it's fine too. So Karen says that just one is uh, just once that that's fine, and then Jonathan would like to hear it one more time. Well, I don't pay. Have... I don't pay so much attention. You didn't pay too much attention. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you for being honest, Jonathan. <laughs> All right, we're going to listen to it one more time. Okay. Oh, <laughs> por acá. For once in a while. How she? Drea. Jane. And then what I would like for you to do is to choose the best statement that describes each individual. So let's listen to that audio program at this time. So, have you seen Andrea lately? Yeah, I see her once in a while. How's she doing? I've been meaning to call her. Well, to be honest, she's kind of been getting on my nerves lately. What do you mean? She's changed a lot since we've started college. She talks about herself all the time, and she always manages to mention how good she is at everything she does. Really? That would be annoying. It is. You know, she asked me to be roommates with her next semester, but I don't think I want to live with her. She used to be really generous, but now she's just the opposite. And it's not just with money, but her time as well. Well, college can be stressful. You two are good friends. Maybe you need to talk more. Right, so there we go, guys. Uh, so now I think that we may be able to say which option is the one that best describes Andrea and why what they said in the conversation that they had. Vamos a ver. ¿Qué me pueden decir? ¿Qué escucharon ustedes? Vamos a ver, Jacqueline. Yeah, then, uh, Andrea is... Uh... Just, she used to be generous, but now she's ego, egotistical. Ego, uh -huh. I don't know how to pronounce it. And, That's fine. Yeah, yeah. Very good. Uh, uh, the the girl who is describing her uh, is um, she's not. She thinks that she won't be able to be the her roommate for the next <laughs> semester. That is correct. Very good, Jacqueline. I like it. Thank you. Very good job. Okay, vamos a ver, ahora tenemos a Melissa. How do you pronounce egotist? Ego, I don't know. Egotistical. 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 Okay. Uh -huh. Thanks. Yes. You're welcome. Bueno, vamos a ver ahora, eh, Melissa, go ahead. Uh, she thinks she's annoying and doesn't want to live with her. Uh, with, live with her. Mm -hmm. and doesn't want to be her roommate that is correct very good very good melissa she thinks that she's annoying and she doesn't want to live with her next semester she doesn't want to be her roommate because she thinks that she's annoying right vamos a ver que mas me pueden decir que mas dijeron acerca de andrea that she change because she, she wasn't changed. like that before she maybe wasn't she like was that. a teenager very good mm -hmm. very good walter uh she said that she's changed okay she has changed uh because she wasn't like that before and also he says at the end that maybe it is because of college because college can be complicated that that may be the reason why uh, she's like that now and that they should talk to each other because they are friends, right? So they may be able to figure it out. Okay, so I think that probably the best option that the best describes Andrea is number one, right? Andrea is someone who is egotistical and stingy. So she said that she's getting on her nerves. She's getting on my nerves lately. She's making me, she's making me angry. No vamos a escuchar muy bien, guys. Eh, sigamos con la número dos para que podamos ir avanzando. Y luego haría falta solamente el número tres, ¿verdad? Vamos. Are you going to James's party on Saturday? 
Of course. James always gives the best parties, and there are always lots of interesting new people to meet. It's true. I don't know where he manages to find them all. Well, you know what he's like. He makes friends very easily. He really likes talking to people, and he loves inviting people over. Uh-huh. He invited me for dinner last Saturday. What a feast. Yeah, he's a great cook, too. After dinner, I offered to help clean up, and he told me not to worry about it. He said he'd take care of it later. He was like, it's nothing, no big deal. Yep, that sounds like James. All right, guys, uh, one more time, okay? Just one more time. She asked me to be roommates with her, and it's not just with money. Be stressful. You two are good friends. Maybe you need to talk more. Are you going to James's party on Saturday? Of course. James always gives the best parties, and there are always lots of interesting new people to meet. It's true. I don't know where he manages to find them all. Well, you know what he's like. He makes friends very easily. He really likes talking to people, and he loves inviting people over. Uh-huh. He invited me for dinner last Saturday. What a feast. Yeah, he's a great cook, too. After dinner, I offered to help clean up, and he told me not to worry about it. He said he'd take care of it later. He was like, it's nothing, no big deal. Yep, that sounds like James. Very good. All right, so James sounds like a really nice guy, right? <laughs> um, Jonathan would like to tell us something about James. So what can you tell us about the conversation, Jonathan? Well, when I itch about James, I want to be your friend. And <laughs> I think so. James is so sociable and friendly. And the second option is the best describe his. That is correct. That is correct, Jonathan. And I, and I would like to be James' friend too because he sounds like a nice guy. Uh, they said like he manages to uh, meet a lot of people to because he likes talking like a and destroy your house <laughs> <laughs> or Project X. <laughs> that sounds good. So, what is James uh, doing on Saturday? This is like the first thing that they said. Oh, a Melissa? Party. A party, yes. This is having a party on Saturday. Vamos a ver, Melissa, creo que nos quiere decir algo. Vamos a ver. I think he's very easy going. He's very easy going. Very good. Yes, that is correct. Because he, they said that uh, he knows a lot of people. He likes talking to people. And he also invites people over to her house, like for example, she said that he invited her uh, to dinner last Saturday, right? That's what she said. Okay, vamos a ver. Eh... <clears throat> Muy bien, guys. Muy bien. Muchas gracias, Melissa y Jonathan. Muchas gracias. Vamos a continuar. Vamos con el siguiente, ¿ok? Have you met the new apartment manager? Mr. Johnson? Yeah. I met him last week. He's a little strange. Yeah, he is. I'm not sure I like him. He's hard to predict. Sometimes he's pretty cheerful and talkative, and the next day he doesn't even say hello. I think he must have personal problems or something. I think you're right. And have you noticed that half the time when he says he's going to do something, he never actually does it? He told me three times he'd come to fix the light in my kitchen, and he still hasn't done it. All right, guys, we're going to listen to it one more time. Vamos a ver. Jonathan, yo creo que estaba preparado. Vamos a escucharlo nada más. Yeah, uh, well, I remember uh, uh -huh. this, this Dr. House when he described his, and um, he's like a temperamental and unreliable for me. Yep. Yep, very I good. like done this in just cases. Oh, really? Yeah, <laughs> just in some cases. I'm, I am the combination to sociable and temperamental. Depends the mood. I see. Well, so I think yeah. that uh, I, I imagine that people don't, don't want to be 
close to you and you are temper temperamental or things like that. It's but a rare they, combination. <laughs> it's really weird. Yes, it's really weird. <laughs> Well, thank you, Jonathan. Vamos a escucharlo una vez más, guys, eh, rapidito. De casi vamos terminando, ¿verdad? He was like, it's nothing. Yeah, he's a great... That sounds like James. Have you met the new apartment manager? Mr. Johnson? Yeah, I met him last week. He's a little strange. Yeah, he is. I'm not sure I like him. He's hard to predict. Sometimes he's pretty cheerful and talkative, and the next day he doesn't even say hello. I think he must have personal problems or something. I think you're right. And have you noticed that half the time when he does something, he never actually does it? He told me three times he'd come to fix the light in my kitchen, and he still hasn't done it. Bueno, ahí está. Eh, como ya dijo Jonathan, eh, acá sería bueno, uh, Mr. Johnson is uh, temperamental and unreliable. But then, uh, why? Why, guys? Why, why do you think that he's unreliable? What did she say that makes us think that she's that he's unreliable? Why? And they say that, and I'm agreed with the last option, and uh, they said that. <laughs> She said that she will do something, but he mm -hmm. didn't do it. Mm -hmm. So it's unreliable and untrustful. Untrustful. Very good. Very mm -hmm. good, Karen. That is correct. So she said that when he says that he's going to do something, like half of the time, he just doesn't do it. Okay? That's the reason didn't why he's, he's unreliable. He didn't do it. Okay? Mm -hmm. At the end, he didn't do it. Uh, because they uh, she actually gave us an example of something that she asked him to do that he didn't do it at the end right that he he will fix something i think mm -hmm. but he didn't do it he and temperamental it. because she they said that uh, one day she he is like talkative mm -hmm. and the next day he doesn't want to talk so that is correct mm -hmm. very very good thank you so much karen very good job vamos a ver alguien más eh, casi que lo que ha dicho karen es casi todo lo correcto eh, así que no sé si alguien más por ahí vi que alguien levantó la mano recuerden que se trata de practicar ¿verdad? acá lo hacemos más que todo para practicar para que ustedes puedan eh, desarrollarse no se trata tanto de si alguien ya lo dijo si ustedes lo quieren decir pues no hay problema bueno entonces acá hasta ahora ya vimos eh, un poco acerca de estos <coughs> adjetivos para describir a las personas eh, esta era la parte que teníamos por acá ¿qué es lo que viene a continuación guys? vamos a ir avanzando porque como les dije esta semana tenemos que cubrir la sección 1 y 2 ¿ok? entonces tenemos que avanzar vamos a ver, so we have uh, this next uh, section here uh, point uh, 1.7 and we have this uh, Based on the audio program that we just listened, uh, we have to the, select the option that best describes Andrea, the option that best describes James, and the statement that best describes Mr. Johnson, who is the new manager. Basically, we already have the answers to all of these. Like in this case, we, we said, and just like Karen said, uh, Mr. Johnson is someone who is temperamental and unreliable, right? Si se fijan acá, estamos también haciendo uso de lo que de lo que vimos al inicio, que es lo de los pronombres relativos, ¿verdad? Okay, acá tenemos who, podemos decir también that. Okay? Andrea is someone that is sociable and easygoing. That would be also another option. Okay. Vamos a ver. Eh, así que eso sería para esta parte, guys. Luego, eh, la siguiente parte nos dice que nosotros describamos, eh, es una actividad de, de eh, writing. Nosotros tenemos que describir a uno de nuestros mejores amigos, ¿ok? Entonces, acá nosotros, eh, por ejemplo, tenemos acá una oración modelo. Que dice, my best friend is someone who is sensitive about my feelings. Uh, she's a person who is very supportive and always listens to my problems. ¿Ok? 
So, básicamente tenemos que nosotros describir, pueden describir ustedes a alguien, un amigo, o también pueden describir a alguien de la familia. ¿Ok? Entonces, si, quizá vamos a hacer eso rapidito antes de que nos vayamos, porque ya es un poco tarde. Eh, por favor, tratemos de anotarlo. Eh, describamos a un amigo o describamos a alguien de la familia utilizando esto que acabamos de ver. ¿Ok? Solo tenemos tres minutos, así que creo que en esos tres minutos podemos eh, escribir algo. O si quieren, hagamos lo siguiente. Eh, también lo pueden ustedes eh, compartir por el chat. Creo que tal vez sería otra opción también para que yo los pueda ver. Y si hay algo que yo pienso que podemos eh, cambiar, pues yo les voy a decir por el chat. ¿okay? Aquí por el chat de, de Zoom. Creo que es una mejor opción. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Jonathan, Walter, Jared, Luis. Which is really funny. And whenever I have needed his help, he has supported me. Okay, very good. My best friend is someone who stands. The good and bad situations gives me support. Uh, okay, so maybe uh, Luis, uh, you can just say uh, gives. Uh, my friend is someone who stands in the good and bad situations. It gives me support uh, to lead me in the right direction. He is someone who can hear uh, my problems and give me advice. My best friend is a little bit temperamental, but she's very supportive, reliable, and intelligent. Okay, very good, Karen. Very good, thank you. Buen trabajo. Muy bueno, muy bien, muy bien, Grace. Eh, solamente hay un par de cositas ahí que les estoy comentando, pero por lo demás, eh, están bastante bien, muy bien, buen trabajo. Me gustan los ejemplos que tenemos. Okay. Very supportive, reliable, intelligent. Okay. Mm -hmm. My sister is someone who is sociable, but she's not an inflexible person. Okay, very good. Nora, very good. Sociable. Okay, muy bien, muy buenos ejemplos, la verdad. Me gustan bastante, guys. Excelente trabajo de todos. Bueno. <clears throat> Entonces, guys, eh, por ahora nos vamos a quedar hasta acá. Ya cubrimos la hora de clase, así que muchas gracias a todos por venir. Buen trabajo de todos. Los animo a que sigamos así. Mañana vamos a continuar con los siguientes temas. Eh, 
y pues eh, vamos a practicar más, ¿ok? Eh, tal vez hagamos alguna actividad para que ustedes practiquen eh, en parejas, grupos, algo para que ustedes puedan practicar, ¿ok? So, guys, uh, thank you so much for coming. It was a pleasure. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Have a good evening. Good night. See you tomorrow. Thank you, Good night. Good night, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.